how it always was. how it always was. Before who's that coming? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. so, There's always a big one. We can have riots with Teddy Hayes. Yeah. We'll uh, and stuff. call this meeting to order at 6 p.m. Present from the administration, Mayor Morley, Finance Director, Ms. Shandell, Law Director, Mr. Clammer, Police Chief, Fire Chief. From the committee, myself, Mr. Heafley, Mr. Zorn, Mr. Pledge, Council President, Council from President. Present from Council, John Myers, Dave Spotton, and Jason Kasunik. Um, we have one item on the agenda to begin with. Mm -hmm. Item number one, I should say, and it's a levy for the Police and Fire Department. I will turn this over to the Mayor and Ms. Shindell. Well, after great consideration, and we've been going over this for months and talking to the Chiefs and talking to or seeing what's going on in the departments, as I said at last night's meeting, you know, we're going to be losing. Two of our firemen, they're at the bottom of the list, and they would be laid off when the safe grant's over. So what we're trying to do, and, and, and as you guys notice, I didn't ask for a uh, general fund one, figuring the two most important things right now in the city is our safety forces. So what we're trying to do is stabilize our safety forces. Uh, and then we can go, if you want to look at the one email Carol Ann sent, that each mill would generate 437,674. So we have discussed I'm doing two mills each for both police and fire. $35 on a $100,000 house. So on a $100,000 house would be 70 a year, $6 a month on that. And most of that. And let's say if we go to 150 or $200,000 house, it's still, it would be not too much more than that. So. For levy. For levy. Right. <coughs> so, so that's what we're asking to uh, you put on the ballot in November. I don't know what the chiefs that they have in there. Chime in or Carol in. Well, the yeah. only thing I want to say is time is of the essence. We got August uh, 10th. 10th is the date that they have to have this. And we have work to do to prepare to get it that far up. So I guess my question to council is, is this something you want to pursue? I have a, I have a question. Mr. Zern. <clears throat> um, okay, so each, there's going to be two levies that you're proposing, and each levy is two mills, which equates to 875000 per levy, so we're, we're about $1.75 million is what we're talking about. Yes. And that equates to about $140 per hundred per household if it's a $100,000 house. <laughs> okay, I just want to be clear. Yeah. Okay. That's total, could you say? Or mm -hmm. each? each. That's well, Carol Ann split it up at 35 per hundred, so we're doing two mills. She did one mill, just as an example. <laughs> the two mills would actually obviously be $70 okay, for the two, that. and then um, it'd be 140 total for both. Just so you know, we tried, we were. Oh, geez, four or five years ago, we were going to do a uh, just a safety force, and they told us we can't combine them anymore. Before in the past, you could say it's just a safety force levy, so this is why we have to split them up to police and fire separate. Mr. Zer. Um, I have a question for the chiefs. Um, uh, $875,000 per each of your budgets, what does that equate to uh, for manpower for a full time employee? Um, well, I mean, it, it, that's what was decided, and you guys decided, hey, we're going to give you this amount of money for personnel or personnel or equipment or for general use within the department. That's where the discussion has to be um, has to be had. I mean, for for that, typically it might be seven, seven, <coughs> seven and a half guys over the, you know, with benefits and, and such. But I don't know if that's how this is intended or not. Um, just found out, I haven't even told the mayor yet. We got another guy filed for disability. I got three or four guys between now and next December that are leaving through retirement. Um, as the fire chief knows, and as we already know, the hiring in and of itself is difficult because to get a guy to take his name off of another list if he's 
you know, if we go to hire him and he's number two on Westlake and number eight on, you know, the other city or whatever, you know, if he asked me, I couldn't good conscience tell him not to, to remove his name from those lists. I'd want a commitment. I'd ask for a commitment, <coughs> but I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't uh, burn the bridge he walks across if he decided to leave because the the prospects look better. The you know the economy and all that stuff. Um, again, you guys you guys got to figure out whether that money is supposed to be earmarked for just personnel or, or what the, the thoughts are as far as that goes. I um, think you can figure that into the levy language. I'm actually researching what we talk to make sure whatever we, there might be a separate levy just for personnel and for equipment. So building we, repair? You see what I'm saying? There might be a separate, I have to look, there might be a, have to be a separate levy for personnel versus equipment, so I'm actually looking right now. What Tom was <coughs> talking about that we could yeah, do. That's what Sharp does, but uh, while we're having that discussion. Chief. So I, I think what I, uh, when I worked with Mayor and Carol Ann, it was, for me, it was to save the three guys on the safer, but it was then to any additional monies, uh, again, I'm probably about five years without sending people out to training, and things that, again, become somewhat essential. Um, so for me, it would be just bringing that, that extra money that we get, because the ambulance billing that we have now has, has been shifted to, to pay for payroll, and, when, and the way that the ordinance reads right now, and that money is pretty much earmarked for the, the, the special teams and the, and the training of, of the department. So that would be me. Um, I think that if we're, since we are discussing this on the front end, I think that there needs to be a, I mean, I think that first and foremost, again, this is about my, I, I couldn't tell you how many rounds of, of working on a levy for me that have all ended up being failures. And, and the one thing that I would caution all of us is that um, first and foremost, this doesn't help the service department. If mine passes and Larry's fails, it doesn't help Larry. If his passes and mine fails, it doesn't help me. And eventually, we need to keep, we need to, to, to solve the entire city issue of sliding backwards. I mean, it's just not the fire and police, it's service and it's everything else that's happening. You know, and it's infrastructure issues and it's, it's collectively, it's, it's a major, major problem. And both of these, as generous as it is, and, and as much as it would help me, they really are such band-aids. And we keep asking for these band-aid fixes, and again, they, they keep rejecting it. And, and, and again, each year we go, and, we, and, we, and we, we're not recovering financially as a city for, for the last 10 years. Um, each year we go by, the further we fall back collectively. This is, again, this is, this is my issue, it's his issue, it's Nick's issue, it's everybody's issues here. Mayors, Carol Ann. So I, I really would say that you know we probably, as much as we're working on these two, we need to collectively look at it as a whole because again, I mean, what are we what are we going to do if, we, if both of them fail? I mean, what's the answer then? Are we going to go back now and say we're going to try another levy? We're going to continue to keep trying to get levies on here because apparently the people in this city aren't going to pass a levy for us. And you know the the day to day stuff that gets done next door between all three of the major service departments in here. You know, it, it, it barely gets done. And, and honestly and truly, that's, that is 100%, you know, that's, that's based on having the good employees that we have left doing good jobs out there. But honestly and truly, if, if, if everybody here at this table and everybody that lives in this city knows what happens on a daily basis to get the job done, I would imagine you would all be appalled. I would hope that you would be appalled. And I think that, you know, collectively, it, it really rests on the shoulders of the elected officials in this community to really try to get together and try to figure out collectively how we're going to save the city. Again, I, I most certainly, you know, that the levy is pushed out for the fire department, and I give my heart and soul, just like I did every levy in this city. It's not been just this one. It's every levy that got pushed out, whether it affected me or it didn't affect me, that I worked polls, I walked the streets, I spent my own time doing that. So I'll support it, but I think that, you know, the bigger issue that I have is we're talking about this. <clears throat> we need to really start thinking about what we're going to do for a collective as a community, and that's my concern. Because I don't know what the answer is if, again, if one of these fails and one of these passes. It's not fair to him. You know, really, where do we gain of, you know, again, I, I gain personally, and I, and I would be happy about that, but, you know, it's still, again, if my, I get those seamless three guys, but I don't have a patrolman to come and help me with during the domestic violence, we haven't solved the problem. 
So that's just something I want to throw out there as, as thoughts as we go forward on this. And I'm not trying to sound like negative, but I've been, I, I think that for me, I've been down this path. I've, 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 I've sat around this table with different faces and we've discussed the same issue. And, and the problem <clears throat> in the city of Eastlake is about the service ability that we can provide that the city, the residents can't provide themselves. A resident can't provide their own fire, EMS, snow removal on streets, police protection, that's stuff that we have to give them. And right now, we're barely making those, the, 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 to be able to get that. And mm -hmm. again, you're talking about some major issues, so I'll stop. Mayor. Well, and then I know Kent asked, I don't know who else asked for the numbers on the tax credit, again, for the new, I've been probably here the longest. Uh, and over the last 10 years, 11 levies, 11 different ways. Every time people said no, we said, well, let's try this one. And 11 straight, it failed. So the last one we did was income tax. Carol Ann ran more numbers for, again, from Rita with the income tax. The income tax would be generated a ton more money if we went what we tried two, two years ago, or whatever, year and a half ago before we did those layoffs. The, if we go and do the income tax again, it get it to 2.5, it brings in a two and a half million dollars. That would be total in the general fund, and obviously that would help more. The way I've looked at it, and I know what they've talked about uh, with our residents, and to go with our residents on safety, you know, we get a lot of calls about the police and about fire, and so I thought maybe that. We don't do. We have we're not asking for general fund money. But if we go to our residents, this money is earmarked for police and fire. Period. It's not gonna. It's not a, a save all like the chief said, but it adds eight hundred fifty thousand dollars more into their their budget. And, and I know at least Chief Whittington was concerned. Well, if we get that, I'm going to take eight hundred fifty out of general fund and not give it to them. That's not the plan. The plan is this is to enhance. And keep what they're running. I mean, we had a fire today. We were down in the harbor. Uh, and thank God the fire got out quick. But again, all everyone's down there. It was we couldn't get the answers of how the fire started. And I don't know if they got them after I was gone. But uh, again, two two were leaving there. Uh, the chief had a policeman leave. We had someone in service leave. You know, our our labor agreements are up this year. You know, they haven't had a raise in 11 years. We have to do something, or we're just going to continue to fall back. So, you know, I know we've discussed, and I know the chiefs, and we won't speak for them, want us to just pull the trigger and do the rest of <coughs> and not put it to the vote. And because if this fails again, we'll be, we may be in the same spot of, you know, if we need the money, are we just going to end up saying, okay, 12 in a row is enough, we're making the decision for you. You guys know I don't like to do that, but... We're, I'm not going to let us go under either. Mr. Gaffney. Um <clears throat> I was looking at the numbers that Carol Ann sent over today, and I agree with the mayor. You know, we've had 10 or 12 of these that we put over the years, and every year they get rejected. Um, I'm a firm believer, and I would like to see, in my opinion, I would go for the reciprocity. And as, after I talked to Carol Ann today, if we were to do that, uh, what was it, point? A 50% credit, Carolyn, that would be actually paying 1%. Paying 1%. So, to give you an idea that, you know, I work in Cleveland, my 2% would go all to Cleveland, but then at the end of the year, I'd have to pay back the 1%. And that's going to be bringing in close to $2.3 million per year. And that's the way I would like to do it, in my opinion. I mean, I will support whatever the majority is, but I would think that if we were to do something like that, because the first thing people are going to say is if we put all that money in the general fund, they're going to say, oh, we're going to be using it to pay down stadium debt. But if we get 2.4 that's coming in, and if it goes through accounting, and then we say, okay, <coughs> each department is only going to get earmarked so much each year of that. So maybe police gets 30% of it, fire gets 30 <coughs> so much goes to service, so much goes to each different department. And Caroline, you're saying we could probably set that out there so that way the people... I agree with the concept, and I have seen some of that done. I don't know to what extent, but I have seen... You know, and that way we know if they were looking at it, we got 2.4 million and it came in. 
so much is for recreation, so <coughs> much is for maybe salaries across the board, so much for police fire. And that way, again, it's not going to go into the general fund, but it's going to go into like a sub account of the general fund, which it's automatically earmarked for those specific places. And that's that would be my opinion on it. I mean, but like I said, I'll go with whatever majority, I'll support anything, and that's the way I feel. I'm just, holding, I'm just holding back. I mean, I sent out my email. I'll reiterate it on the record, but I you know, <clears throat> want to give everybody an opportunity to speak as well. So, Chief Ray? And this is kind of as a resident, not a politician, but, you know, the same with Chief Whittington that, you know, we, we put forth 100% effort for past levies to be disappointed. And then after those levies failed, we've been told, and I understand the argument from the politics side is how do we take something that we asked for and then get, which is why at some point we, I think, need to take things that we did ask for. They're, you know, <coughs> oversimplified, I guess, if the bills aren't being made at home and in thousand dollars is allotted to spend on bills and we're only spending seven hundred dollars on it sooner or later someone's going to make have to make the hard decision that we got to spend the rest of the money because the money's there it's available and we're we're drowning i mean i, I guarantee if anyone at this table has been with me or chief whittington over the last seven days they would say whatever you guys want us to do we're going to do because i mean no Two out of the last seven days, five in uh, the top five busiest of my career, including today. So, and it's not going to get, and, and this is on the heels of still trying to get things done for the RNC. And, and you know, again, the, the plans are there. We're, we're fairly confident we have as many um, reactions in place for contingencies, but, you know, to not be concerned would be foolish. Um, and, and that, again, that's just a short future. That's just to get through to the end of next week. And then, you know, when I start thinking ahead to the end of next year and hiring maybe four or five guys and seeing that the pool of 50 that we had last year that we, we hired two out of and there was a couple other good candidates that got picked up by other places and we're down to our last 10 with, with maybe one or two decent ones in there. But it's, you know, and then going through that whole testing process again takes time and, and, and <coughs> money and aggravation and all that stuff to hopefully get people that stay with us. The guy comes here, hey, we're, you look at your first three, five steps for your first three years, not too bad. You know, you start off at this rate and, and you have a pretty, pretty decent movement up. But you look at the guy after three years to his eight years and you know, there's no raises, and your neighboring cities are are killing it. And it, it's it's great for them that they get to just cherry pick from other agencies. We talked about officers that we employed and trained and gotten to a certain point so they could go to the richest areas of our county and service the residents of those communities. And then we are back at square one again. And that doesn't even talk about the stress of three and a half, four months of, of uh, training and stuff like that goes, that goes into each individual guy and how few guys you have doing that and how much, you know, that just builds upon itself. So um, I know there's not another guy like the guy across the table for me. And eventually there'll, there'll be a point where both of us are at the end of our careers, you know, the my retirement papers go in at the end of September which still projected another eight years but at some point you may, may not have chiefs that decide that hey running on the squad might be part of the fire chief's responsibility you know making heroin arrest and, and, and things that I'm just not comfortable letting somebody else do might not be the next chief's idea of what this job is supposed to entail. And 
we just got we got to figure out something and I, I my biggest concern with the levy would be if it fails that it's even that much harder especially for the, the position that four of you are in being very new at this to say yeah we just asked you for this but now we're going to take it anyway I think the knowing and hopefully you guys are, have gotten a little acclimated to the need being much more dire than maybe even it was shown from the outside because the stuff he does and hopefully some of the stuff that we do puts on a better picture than what is really behind the scenes so i've talked to everyone i know that lives within the city and encourage other people to ask questions i know you know a lot of us have done the same and that's what it takes to get the the, the people to understand that this isn't this isn't wants people you know these are needs and if if the biggest thing we got to take it is somebody shouting at us that oh my god i can't believe you took some of that for raises yeah you know i'm sure over the course of, of their employment if they went as long as we did without raises they'd be doing the same thing they'd be looking for for another copy or company or another you know construction company to work for that that gives them a little more stability and we can't expect our people to do any less Chief you know, the one thing I really thought about, because I know this is an agonizing process for everybody that's elected to this community, but the one thing that, you know, that really stands out in my mind is that we do have a lot of people that are progressive employees. And, you know, so they, they take all their local taxes and they send it to a, a community that's thriving. I mean, you pay 2% to Mayfield Village in a community that's absolutely excelling. And the community you live in is struggling, and for me, that's that, that's the one thing with with the whole income tax thing. You did it, that, that, the credit that's put out there. You know, I just I, I, I would like to think that, you know, that people want to reinvest in their communities. And I, I I don't know. I know it's a, I know it's a difficult decision. I know it's not probably one that you know the, the people are willing to, to to really openly jump on board right away with. But I'm not sure. You know, again, the, the, the city's in pretty bad shape. I mean, we're we're, we're, we're probably a lot worse than. The most people know, and another reason that, you know, again, a lot of the stuff that gets done behind the scenes really just, you know, keeps us in a good, positive light. But eventually, it's going to get catch caught up with us. It's the, uh, the it's the rusty gas tank. Eventually, that hole is going to open up, and you're not going to be able to let any gasoline in. And I think that we're pretty close on some of this stuff. So that's just my thought. I think that, you know, the, the, if we're trying to come up with selling points, is we keep our pain taxes. <coughs> To, to, to sometimes to, to communities that are doing very well. If you live in, if you, if you work in Mentor, you're giving Mentor all your money. You know, and Mentor is, again, a very solid city. If you work in Willoughby, there's a lot of communities around us that actually are doing very well. And, and, and I think that you know, that's something that when I think about talking to residents and that type of thing. But. Okay, um, um, I, Mr. Um, Pledge. Okay. Well, I think we, I think, um, you know, revenue flow is our issue, and there's only two ways really to do that. You increase your tax dollars and you reduce your expenses. We've been reducing expenses for uh, since like 2003. Ten years. I, I mean, it's, 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 and I don't think there's been any, um, anything that we've done that hasn't, nobody's tried to impede the flow of um, income. Um, or tax dollars through businesses or anything else. We've done everything we can to make it an attractive community. So those are really your only options, and we have reduced everything that we can, so we have to find a way to, ra to raise it, which is through a levy or through reciprocity. Um, with that, last night on the news, Cleveland is looking at uh, raising their two and a half. So that means that every, if even if we raise it to two and a half, that means we're still on par with Cleveland, and all our residents who work in Cleveland don't, won't pay us a dime. So if we don't get on the board and do something fast, raising reciprocity is going to be a moot issue, or we're going to have to raise it twice as much to clear the other communities who are already ahead of us, who are always ahead of us, um, to try to get any money. And I go back to the levy, and again, if it's the majority opinion that that's the way to go, you know, I again, I will work just as hard as anybody. I'll work the poll. I'll knock on doors. I talk into my lips are blue, whatever it takes, you know, so the city can be successful. But after 11 tries. Is, it, we're not put here to make easy decisions. We are elected to lead this community, and we have intimate knowledge of the financial constraints that we are working within and the risks that our, our police and fire and service people are being put in 
every single day. And I think that, um, you know, it's not going to be a popular decision. It's not an easy decision. But I can tell you right now, if that levy goes down and we try to make it, there will be an uproar mm -hmm. from the citizens just like there was the last time. And so the levy went down. We didn't do reciprocity because it was really like, you know, the first time I probably ever got phone calls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, people were really upset about it. And so we said, no, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. Well, here it is. It's almost two years later. And I don't, I, I don't think anything has really changed uh, in our community or the let me nothing has changed in the public's perception of our community and how we're running this this city that's going to be reflected in the polls so then I go back to we have to sometimes make unpopular decisions and hard decisions but we have to support our police and fire and service as well so I do support reciprocity and I don't if I think that if we don't do it soon it'll be a moot point and we will end up in fiscal watch fiscal emergency it's just a matter of time so, okay. but that's my thought and that's what i put in the email and um tracy it's kim it. my thoughts are this we have tried 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 to put a levy through here even one at a dollar 70 a month and it failed um if we went with reciprocity it will affect every single member of this council's income and family. Every single one. So it's not like somebody's going to say, well, you guys don't have to pay it. We do. Because if your spouse works in any other city and lives in Eastlake, you're going to pay this, this, this fund. I've always been against reciprocity. But this time, and it is time that we make a change. We, we can't get it through. I think we ought to look at reciprocity. I really seriously do. Mayor, I know you're against it. Well, no, I'm, I'm just, sorry. Well, I just have to. If it's put in by count, if it doesn't go, if it goes to a vote mm -hmm. and it is passed, then everyone pays. If it goes, if you just put it in, the people that work in the city of Eastlake, it doesn't affect. We're talking reciprocity. It doesn't affect. Right. right. People that live in Eastlake, it doesn't it affect. Work. If they work in another they city, work, it affects them. If you live here, it doesn't affect has them. zero effect to them. Right. But right. if you work outside the city, you will end up paying the city. Right. Is right. The point. If you pull council, you're going to find that every one of us has a spouse or one of us that works outside the city. There is one other thing with reciprocity, and that is you're affecting those that are working, whereas the levy affects those people working or not working on fixed income or not fixed income. And you have two big differences right there as well. It is, and the, le the levy affects property owners. Exactly. And, that's, and I think what's important with reciprocity, too, is it protects our senior citizens who have the fixed income. So. I think that's it. And that sometimes <coughs> is confusing to the residents, so hopefully we can communicate to them yes. that this will not impact them in any way. Chief Rick? I mean, if we're worrying about optics, <coughs> you know, I'm in the same position as council that at least with, with the council pay, it, it, oh, it doesn't affect you, doesn't affect you. Find out what percentage it is that affects us, I'll put the money. If you want to say, well, it should affect, you know, if that's what it takes, I'm voting for every other levy that affects my property and I try to improve my property as time goes on. So, you know, I'll put my money where my mouth is. And I'm, from knowing what councils have done in the past as far as forfeiting raises or, you know, taking cuts and stuff like that, if that's the big issue, then that's an easy solve. You know, I brought up myself and Chief Whittington a bunch. Mayor in the same position. If, I think it'd be unlikely, and again, I've seen my share of mayors in this community that whether it's this next term or the term after, wherever, if you think the next mayor is going to do the same work that this mayor is doing, I think it, it probably, they're probably going to end up being disappointed too. For the, for the, the councilman between now and whenever this decision's made, if the decision's made, you guys. I would encourage you to get out more and get it out to give some people some real life stories of the stuff you're seeing. You know, the 
the 52 year old that OD'd in his shed yesterday and died and your girlfriend sees him out there and that, I mean again the craziness that is going on on a, a day to day basis <coughs> it, this isn't about about soccer fields and swimming pools and, and safety town it, this is about the stuff that me and him can't sit down and make sure we have the best plan available for next week at Radisson and everything. We'll put together a good plan because we're leaving to go to house fires and, and, and ODs and death complaints because we just don't have the people. So but by seeing that firsthand, I think would give you a little more idea and maybe passion when you got to explain to a resident that's not happy about the decision you made. At least, and maybe help you sleep get better at night to say, I looked at everything and this was the best decision with the power that you've been entrusted with. Mr. Zern. I have a question for uh, Director Schindel. Um, reciprocity, uh, is it um, has it been passed in Willowick or Willoughby or two neighboring cities? Well, Willowick has it. Do you know what percentage? Quarter. About a quarter, I think. Uh, it's something uh, around that area. Willoughby Hills is they, two. two and a half. So they, have, if you if you're a Willoughby Hills resident, you pay two percent. You work in East Lake, then you pay the other point five to Willoughby Hills. So Willoughby Hills is at two and a half. Willowick, I think, uh, just, just a little is a quarter percent. But that's been. I mean, I. Grew up there. That was there yeah. fifty years. And so they've, they've and never had. They are looking at changing that. And Willowick's property tax is twice as high as we said. Three times. Three times. There you go. I was being modest. They're at eighteen and a half mils. Or they're also so. increasing the inside mm -hmm. seven mils. Macedonia is half. Mm -hmm. Macedonia is half. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have the list here if somebody yeah. wanted it. So. I think East Lake is the lowest in, in terms of the reciprocity. Yeah. I don't have anything else. Yeah. And I think second lowest in property outside of that. Right. I mean, and if it's something that you don't want it with the mills go, I mean, and if it's something you don't want to decide on now, I mean, but again, we'll see where we're at at the end of the year. And then. Well, when do we collect that money, though, on the we go back? We're they, still suffering for the next year, right? They right. tell me that on a levy, if you make it effective January 1st, 16, you would be collecting it in 17. Yeah. You're going to have the same issue with the uh, reciprocity because by the time you make it effective and by the, by the time you go to collect it, there's going to be that lag. The income tax will be coming in a little at a time, whereas the levy money comes in twice a year. Anybody else? Either way, it's 17. You're looking at yeah, it. Yeah, right. We're close six months. We're yeah. close six months, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Mr. Hayes. The other thing, too, is, you remember, too, is if we do put a levy on the ballot and if it fails, we're still dragging and we're going to be back to where, what are we going to do? Are we going to enact yeah. reciprocity at that time? I think that's a worse position. That would be the end. worst position That'd to be, be in. Cause we, and we've already been in that position. So I would not want to be one to try to do that. that. We've already been precisely that. Sorry, I put down my yeah. decision. But we've, been, we've had this discussion. Yeah. We failed the levy, and then nobody wanted to do reciprocity because the voters just spoke, and the levy was the argument. Right. And now we're, right, we're, we're putting ourselves in a jackpot where that is a possibility as opposed to eliminating that as a possibility. We could argue a probability. A probability, sure. We're, so we're putting ourselves it. right in that jackpot. So unless, it, unless as we sit here now, people are prepared to make that, that tough decision of what that due reciprocity if the levy fails, don't put yourself in that jackpot. Yeah. Mm. Mr. Spotton? So, at least the 1% reciprocity, does that get us on the right track? Because we're going to get one shot at this. You're so never going to no, 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 no. It doesn't go. You guys we do. It's we legislative. Do it. We I do understand it. that. But you're going to get one shot at the voters. They're not going to pass anything ever for 20 years. They, Is this right. The us? voters haven't let go of the stadium. I understand and that. The, yeah. I'm I mean, saying if we do yeah. that, does that get us heading on the right track? 1%. Or, yeah, or is it just another Band-Aid and we're still... 2.3 million? That would bring in about 2.3, 2.4 per year. Yeah. It would definitely get us in the right direction. Chief, Chief Mike, right? And this is as 
a politician without putting the work you guys have put into to get yourself elected. I, I've talked to the mayor about this before. My thought was always enact a larger reciprocity, try to pass a levy a year later with the, the care of <coughs> we pass this level we to reduce the reciprocity. So that way, you know, we don't need to go up to, you know, 1999 standards or, or whatever the FBI says or whatever. We just, we have to start, we're torquing down on these guys day after day after day. At some point, we have to say we're starting to go in the right direction and there is some sort of light at the end of the tunnel or, you know, you just, I'm just concerned about how how that all evolves with the constant pressure with no with no end in sight. Mr. Zern, I had a qu another question for uh, Director Chandel. Um, it shows Willoughby Hills and Willowick as uh, about a quarter percent reciprocity. Uh, Willoughby and <coughs> Wickwick do not. I don't see it on there that they have that. Uh, Respirosity. Will be, will be no. has, is oh, same as us. Yeah. Okay. The same as us. Okay, and then you gave numbers for 50% respirosity of 2.3 million is a, is a quarter percent. Is that half of that? Is it 1.15 million? Okay, 50% uh, um, credit means people have to pay 1%. And a 75% credit means people have to pay half percent. So we're giving 75% of the two as a credit, and you'll have to pay a quarter of the two, which is equal to half percent in what you and I would call. Mm -hmm. Okay, so half yeah. of this one, it's a 1.15. Rough, I mean, I'm trying to get the, the right, dollar, right, the right, income, right, right. the revenue. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kenny, Mr. Eflin. <clears throat> I was looking at this today, and if we did that, the 0.5, which would be the 1%, and if, say, we were to break it down by different departments, you know, based on that 2.3 that would know be coming in, if you were to give police and fire each 30%, you're looking at roughly about 690000 for each of those departments. If, I'm just, and I just threw out some numbers. Service, if you gave them 5%, they'd get another 115. Finance, 5%, 115. Building, you know, 115. If you put 10% to infrastructure, that would be 230000 per year. Mayor and council, if you were to put 5%, that's another 115. If you were to do 5% for salary increases across the board for, you know, to have in a, in a little pool, that's 115. And if you threw 5% into recreation, that's 115,000. That's just the amount of money that could be sitting aside if we were to set up separate accounts for, based on that would be coming in each year. And then it would be each department's, you know, the chiefs are, you know you have this much money, now you have to work within that budget. Yeah. Just throwing that out with the 2.3. Mm -hmm. You know, and there could be another category that you would want to split off. That's the way to do it. I mean, I, look, I mean, for nothing my opinion matters, I think Mr. Spotton is on to something. I'd like, you know, that's a good idea. That the pushback always was that you're always going to have some voters saying, well, you're not bound by that. It's purely legislative. You want to change for a win. But you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. They're not, there's a group of people are, that aren't going to to give you the credit you deserve and the trust and there's a group that will trust you. So. One or one percent a little bit seems like progress. All right. Uh, no, not for me. Mayor, anything else? No, you just if you don't want to pursue the uh, the levy, <coughs> then you don't really have to meet on that again. You just if you want to continue discussions on the rest of the process, you can do that. I mean, the only reason we did this is because you have to have it enough by our tenth right. board of elections. If you plan on you don't want to do that and your thoughts are we don't want to do that, then we get in other discussions. Yeah. Those uh, discussions can go on, they just don't have to be done by August 10th, from, yeah. from what I know. I understand your point, though. We're not, we can't dilly dally and make a decision. No, we can't. We can't, we can't keep delaying this. Yeah. At this point, I want to go ahead and pull the committee see which way they want to go. Uh, Mr. Zorn. I'd, I'd like to go last. I'm still thinking about it. I'd like to go last. Uh, so you and Ken, that. so. Mr. Haveling. Um, Well, I know you want to poll the committee, but I think, you know, I'd like to see a poll. My opinion, I'd like to see just a poll that I know from everybody at the table because it would affect the directors. Even though they don't have a vote on it, I'd like to get an idea of where they all would feel. Um, I mean, I would definitely go for 
the reciprocity. I would go for that 50%, which would be the 1% that it would be taken out. That's my opinion. Do okay. it now, and because we need to do something. Okay, let's go. You want any objections? I'm pulling everybody. No. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start down to you, Chief Wright. Well, again, I, I let the mayor know our differences of opinion on this because I didn't want him to feel like I was undercutting him, and I think we have a lot of respect for each other. We just differ on this. Um, five, five and a half, almost six years of being chief, I haven't. The atmosphere that I get from the public never transformed to the voting booth. And I know people, you know, the reason the curtain's on the voting booth because people do what they vote, how they want to vote when they get there. Um, I don't know how we can impact people anymore to, I, I won't even know what the next step would be to say, hey, this is how we can sell a levy even better. You know, we're doing safety, how we're doing, you know, we've done open houses, we've done civilian police academies, and you're not going to find a friendlier fire chief. I mean, it, it's, uh, <laughs> Director Rubertino, the, you know, the... the you didn't actually say anything about him, you just said his name. Yeah. <laughs> the, the directive the mayor put out when he first took over as far as returning calls and the, the, the things that have changed in the last two and a half years, I still don't see as transforming this community. And it, it frustrates me being a 25 member that you're a member of the community that that's the case. Um, but <coughs> after all this time, I really think going big and then dialing it back when they, they see, the only way they're gonna have our, our trust is by seeing that we're doing the right things with the money. Every person we've invited to go over our budget and to see what we do and you know, they seem to get it once we have that conversation finding a way to get that conversation out there to the normal everyday person who, like ourselves, has so many things going on in their own life that they really either have to trust us or are not going to trust us. We're going to have that 30% that that's going to vote yes all the time, that 30% that's going to vote no all the time. The, the other 40%, how do I identify and get to them? I, I have not been able to, uh, to get that handled. So. Um, again, whatever whatever I have in front of me, I'm going to do my best to handle, but I feel our, our, the best move for the, the city is to go big and dial it back and we, uh, and we push the levy that way. I think he's saying reciprocity. I also support reciprocity, and, and, I, and I think that, uh, you know, the mayor a lot of the meetings that we have and and, and, and really understanding the fact and, and, and not to over dramatize this it, it really is an agonizing discussion that, that we have with each other and I know with Larry too about really some of the things that we're up against and you know the mayor used a, an interesting word the other day and it's really stuck in my head and he, and he used the word stabilization stabilized mm -hmm. and I think that what a reciprocity does if you if you, if you we give them the 50 percent credit what you essentially can do now is that you allow the city to, to become a, a, have the ability to become more stable when it comes to providing services uh, as we go out there. Um, and it most certainly puts us all in better positions where um, you know, we, can, you know, we, have, we have the ability to, again, for me, if, if, if I'm given that money, I mean, it saves my three guys that are on safer. So it's not really gonna increase my staffing anywhere significant. Now again, you know, to, to, to run with minimums of six and, and doing almost 3,000 calls, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of workload for my people, but I would not be asking to, to, to increase and I would not be asking for more. I would be really, again, using that term that the mayor used, it would be really an ability for me to stabilize over there and, and maybe have um, a couple of years where I could have some, take a breath uh, as far as continuing to try to think about moving back. So I, I, that, having said that, I, I, I also have a tremendous amount of respect for my boss. Uh, I, I take a bullet for the guy, he works very hard. It's a pleasure to work for him. Uh, I know that sometimes we don't see eye to eye, especially on this, on this case here, but most certainly I think that, um, you know, and, I, and I don't want to undermine anything that he's done, but I think that that does put us in a position where it stabilizes. So I love that. Okay. Mr. Myers. I don't 
necessarily. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't necessarily <coughs> find either option very palatable. Um, but after hearing the arguments uh, on both sides and everything, and, and some of the people I've talked to, um, I'm more inclined to lean towards the reciprocity than I am the levies. Ms. Shindell. I'm going to account for whatever monies we have. And we do need more. And the levy is a band-aid. Okay. The levy affects fixed income people who are on Social Security and didn't get any extra money this year. You're going to have a problem. The reciprocity affects those people that are working. So although I don't have an opinion either way, I just want to make it clear that you're really dealing with two totally different animals. Mr. Clammer? No, I think uh, Ms. Schindel said it best, and you know, you guys are in a tough position from a political standpoint because of these are tough conversations to have with people. But you have that tool. The tool is there for you at your discretion to do that rollback. We had the exact same conversation. We had it in January, and we had it when the last set of levies failed. Mm -hmm. And I would, that's my recommendation. I would do it. I would do the one for seven, which is five and six. Mr. Kassim. The, the thing that leaves a bitter taste in my mouth when it comes to reciprocity is with respect to low income individuals who work outside of the city because it, it, it's a really bizarre tax structure and it's a crappy tax structure. It's a regressive tax structure and um, it, it's especially odd because you could have somebody making $30,000 a year and they would pay possibly more than somebody making forty, forty-five thousand dollars $45,000 a year because one works in the city and the other doesn't, which is garbage. Um, and I also see Ms. Chandel's point with the uh, fixed income people. We don't want to you know, make life difficult for them either. Also worthy of note, the state did you know, cut taxes and to pay for it, they cut money here, which um, we could view at whatever tax um, ends up being imposed, could be viewed as basically just tax reapportionment because we lost that money and um, we're really just making up for it. Um, so I, I really don't, uh, like I said, either way, it just feels like trying to pick the best, worst option, basically. The least worst. The least mm -hmm. correct. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best crappy. The best crappy one. So I think probably reciprocity is the least for, <laughs> for what it's worth, the 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 state when the state <coughs> took the money, the response was raise taxes locally. Yeah, that's what they told us. That's exactly what they told us to do. They took our money, and if state can't impose tax, however you know on our, our community or on our income, whatever. However they well they do the <coughs> income tax, but they basically said raise your taxes locally. So what you're feeling or what you're perceiving is exactly what was anticipated by the highest levels of state government. Mr. Zern. I had a I had another question regarding uh, reciprocity. What what would the effective date be if we did pass reciprocity? Is it immediate or is it a next calendar like year? A, I think like it would the ordinance. Be, yeah, I think it would be immediate. What? But it's payable. In 20. You can look up the 17, 2001 right? or 2002 when they did it last it time. Well, from now? How does it affect? It didn't. They did it once in How does it affect the withholding? It's like 4% I think for a year. Did it go into the withholding? Mm -hmm. Oh, the cities can do additional withholding to cover the residence tax. Mm -hmm. We do that for people that live outside of here, that work here. Mm -hmm. So cities or places of employment can do that withholding? That's what I'm wondering. Yes, they can do that so withholding? The, the biggest delay, if you wanted to go fast, would be, I think, that practical delay of how do we communicate that to 
physicists have been withholding. Well, Rita, does that make sense? Rita does that. Okay. So the question is, can you make this effective for January 1st, 16, or do you have to make it effective for the day? That's my question. Well, my information would have been the day it passed. Like, okay. I didn't give any thought, but that was my okay. information. Okay. I, I have one more question for uh, Director Schindel. Um, are, is there any additional cost to the city to do reciprocity? Is there any employees or extra man hours or anything that we're going to have? It's all handled by Rita. They send us Rita. the Rita. accounting and all the details. Rita does the work on that. And just, Jason, just to address one of the things you said about a lower income person, if somebody's making $20,000 and they're working outside the city, I think it equated to fifty dollars for every ten thousand, so it's a hundred dollars per pay or a hundred dollars for the year. So basically, their paycheck would go down four dollars a pay. That's the that's the impact on somebody, and obviously, exponentially it changes. But that's what they would notice. Um, I I never like raising taxes. Period. Um, Nobody but does. So I, <laughs> I see the need, and I've witnessed or visually seen the need over the last six months and um, I would uh, lean toward reciprocity I still even though maybe unpopular um, I still think we should put a levy on even if we do reciprocity okay. Mr. Evelyn uh, as everybody's aware I'm full with the reciprocity okay. um, so say I'm a third generation lifetime resident and I have an eight year old daughter in the city and I want the city to be a thriving place for her to grow up in. So I, this would affect me and along with a lot of people here. I don't live in, I don't work in the city. Uh, I work in Kirtland so it would hit me hard but I'm probably leaning towards the reciprocity also. Okay. And I, I could mirror Mr. Spahn's comments their generation resident here. I have young relatives that live in the city, cousins and things that I wanted to be a thriving community. I want us to have all those things that we used to have. Mm -hmm. I would be thrilled to have recreation again. It would be awesome or, um, to be able to contribute in, in different ways that make the community more appealing to the residents. So absolutely, I support reciprocity. Mayor? <laughs> well, I've lived here 35 years. I've had my discussions with the troops and the other directors. From my perspective, from our end, we do nothing and we've been doing nothing, just getting by and uh, you lose either way. So we sit back and say we're not going to do anything again. And sooner or later as my chief at the end of the table, or both of those chiefs at the end of the table say, okay, we're going to continue to wait. And so, and I'm not saying we're even close to fiscal emergency or fiscal we can do that, and then, like the last time we were in fiscal emergency, the state can come in and say, go to your residence for tax levies. So we can continue to go to tax to our residents, and no. I mean, I guess everyone in this room, if they're honest with themselves, if we go, it'll probably fail. Right? We failed 11 in a row, we failed for a dollar twenty-seven a month. The Willoughby Lake schools just failed, even though it passed on a hole in East Lake. The Lakeland levy failed in East Lake, even though it passed on the whole. So the way I look at it, it's just not us, or or the administration, or the council. You know, I just had I've talked to two residents a week about the thing on the corner again, and why we'll never pass anything. But the, what I've been talking to residents over probably the last month is when they're calling, complaining about the service, not having the services. I said, what I've been doing in a nice way is I'm not upset that you are telling me you vote the levies now, so please don't be upset with us for cutting the services. I said, if we had the money, obviously we'd have the police. I just talked to someone about the service department because we're not going out and jetting anymore because we don't have the bodies to go jet their culverts anymore. You know, you got to hire someone. So it's either you pay through the taxes or you pay the $500 that they want to jet your culvert out. So... You all know I'm not a fan of the reciprocity. They all know I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I've always been saying that they vote, but I grin. Uh, after this last one failed and we people came to me, especially our employees, and said, you need to just do it, it would be tougher for me personally again to say we go to November 8th or whatever the, the day of the ballot is and fail again and go, 
and the employees come and say, well, let's put it in, I'm gonna say no again. So, but obviously you guys could override my decision on that. Well, I do like Chief Reich's idea though of if we did reciprocity and then we put a levy on and we roll back reciprocity. But, I mean, it, gives, it gives people back some control. I, 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 I it gives them, but the other thing is, it, it gives us one or ten. It, it, gives, but they're good, they're that's good. Point. it gives us credibility. It could give us credibility that we seem to not have. Here's my point on that, and we've had this discussion. They thought me saying, they thought not me, they thought us saying we were eliminating leaf pickup was a threat, let alone, <laughs> hey, we're going to put reciprocity. Oh, okay. But yeah. if you do this, if you vote on it, we're going to roll it back. So what do you think a bigger threat is going to be? Gotcha. I, mean, I hear you. That, that's okay. We've had that discussion. If you're going to do it, just do it, but there's no yeah. reason to publicize it. No, so my thought is just do it, and then not this November, the next November. Hey, this is what we've done since then. You know, how we dress it up, that's, that's our job to sell what we're Maybe we just what we're agreeing to take or what we like this, or when you guys decide like to, to enact, it's our job that's to sell same. why that's There's needed. Over that course of the year, we do that, and then we could say, okay, we can replace this. Maybe not with a go back to an income tax thing. And again, you don't put it on the seniors. We every time we came up with a levy, we, I think we all felt good that we're approaching this the right way. We didn't want to affect this group. Okay, let's affect this group. We, but regardless what group we go to, we're told the same thing. But then those are the same people. Why aren't you picking up our leaves, jetting the sewers, locking out our cars? But you're saying, doing the, you're not saying do reciprocity and go on this November because that sounds correct. like right. You're saying no. do the reciprocity, correct. make some proof like, that next November. And like the mayor said, if you want it to sound like a threat, everything will sound like a threat. Mm -hmm. If you want, if you believe us, the chief and I are, are voted in, if they believe you guys, they believed you to get you in, into these positions. They, you're, you're the trusted representative. If, if they don't feel you're gonna make the right decision, then they shouldn't have voted you in in the first place. And if, if that is what down the line is that decision, I, I put my own job along with that. It's like, you know, what else, what else can you look at to show me that a, a different direction is, <coughs> is a better direction? I think he's going to say it, but I, I agree. See? If he agrees with me, it's got to be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Haefeli. If we do the reciprocity and you start to see the funds coming in, I mean, we have to make an impact to the community so they can see something. You know, like if you start to address the, the recreation and get some new playground equipment and get the stuff out there where they start to see, wow, you know, they're making some positive changes. To the, <coughs> they're seeing that. Um, if you, you know, when they see, when it's plow, you know, the time for plowing and everything like that, you know, you have the funds there where you can, you know, get the extra guy out there, you know. Well, here's, just, here's the part of the problem. We're so behind on things like the roof here. I mean, go take a look in the fire department and see all the uh, tarps and garbage cans over their server. There's so <laughs> much we have to fix before we can do that kind of stuff. Well, if I break in the, the way, and well, the way Mr. Heathley has the floor, please. But see, like what I was saying is, if we know we got the 2.4 coming in, and if you were to say, okay, we set aside 10 percent for infrastructure, that's 230 thousand a year that would go towards that stuff. Recreation, 5 percent, 115 k. I mean, you're talking, you know, you start hitting, you know, the playground equipment. You've got the funds. You know, you're going to be getting roughly 200. 30k for infrastructure. You know, you can you, the police. If you did 30 percent for the police and fire, you're talking almost 700,000 each there. They have in their departments, but you start to do the stuff and do the stuff that the people are going to see the visuals, the visual stuff, and then they're going to say, okay, yeah, they're getting this money, from us, but now they're going to say, wow, they got new playground equipment at Jackson Park and new, you know, new swing sets over there, or, or some improvements at the skate park or something. Let me interject something here real quick. The object was to poll everybody to see whether they wanted to go with reciprocity right. or go with the levy. I think if we stick with that, these other discussions are great, mm -hmm. but they could come at a later time. We need to decide what we're going to do here. I, think I, I don't mean to cut it short. But, but you polled everybody, so. Right. So um, we'll set that for another meeting. Yeah. It yeah, does. I'm, I'm fine. I'm not <laughs> wouldn't argue that. <laughs> I, I, 
figured we had to do something. That's why I threw the police and fire levy out because if anything, what I talked to them about is if we if we went and the calls we're getting about police and fire and the people I've been talking are all concerned about our police and fire and about the way the world is right now, I thought maybe we could, uh, if we were going to go after the levies that. You know, and I and I, I know his eyes went big yesterday, and I said, "Well, I'm gonna back, we're gonna back off, and when we would have meetings, we're gonna let them talk instead of us. I mean, open up mm -hmm. the meeting, but coming from them instead of coming from us, if we get people to meetings, are a whole different story. Right. I mean, I think the chief said it best when we had the town halls, the no's that came in were yeses on their way out. But again, we had 90 people show up for five right. meetings. I remember those. So they were good meetings. They were good meetings, but I'm just saying. But I'm fine with however you want to go. I just want to just conclude one of my thoughts on this. I think that obviously the burden of this decision really falls on council, but I think that the direction that we decide to go is, is universal, and that includes the director. So I don't want. I would hope that you would know that this, when this decision or how this decision is made. I'm standing right beside of you, and I would be more, cer more certainly be willing to address anybody had any concerns, any residents that wanted to discuss it, especially as it relates to the fire department. So again, as much of the burden that you guys are, are taking on with this, you know, as far as making the decision, I think that you know, when, when, when people show up to meetings or people have questions, I'm standing right next to you. I'm not going to go crawl under a rock. I'm not going to, you know, and, and again, I, I know we have two different interests here, but I just want you to know that, uh, that I'll be there. I mean, Okay. And not surprisingly, shortly on that same line, one of my thoughts, if we were going to go for a levy, was a copy off of Superintendent Thompson. And what he did is he he didn't try try to knock on people's doors at six o'clock in the after or whatever, because we found every different avenue we tried, we didn't get a good response. So he would go, or I will go, or I'm sure Chief Whittington would go and say. I Ken Hafley here. You live in Valley Creek. You know your neighbors. You sponsor the party. You get the group together because they trust you. Maybe not Ken, but they, <laughs> they trust him. They'll come to his house, you know, for for some water and some cookies and stuff like that. Hey, the chief of police and fire are going to come by, and you barrage them with whatever you want to talk about. And it's more of a, a community forum rather than a, a preaching thing or something like that. And by knowing that. And this is just so you guys know that that is within your arsenal to tell people, hey, if you say all the people in Waverly think this, get them together. We'll bring the chiefs out, we'll bring the directors out, we'll bring whoever you want out here, and they'll talk to you, whether it's in a backyard or basement or whatever. So again, you know, we're not gonna, we're not hiding from a decision we don't have to make. We'll, we'll support whatever you guys decide. All right, table. Or move it forward. I would say move it forward to a vote for reciprocity. I move it forward. Move it forward for reciprocity. Okay. So moved. Next item on the agenda, and again, I'm going to turn this back over to the mayor. Uh, the referendum for the ACL. I'll defer to the law director because we're still. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. what the Board of Elections has told us, I don't agree with on the part that we have kept the one that has to come up with what the language on the ballot is. Yeah, and the Board of Elections doesn't, isn't quite confident on what they think they have. I had conversations about today, but you know, if you want to have, in order for me to give the legal opinions, we probably should go to an executive session on it. So if you want to have legal opinions from me on it, we'll go to an executive session. And before you do that, I could, we can touch on Mike Slocum's thing real quick. Yeah, I'd rather. Let's. Uh, all right, uh, we'll move to item three. My Mr. Slocum's compensation. We've all gotten a letter here, mm -hmm. and again, we'll turn it over to uh, the mayor and finance director. Well, when Mr. Slocum, before he passed away, retired, <laughs> we looked at we had a difference in the numbers that he handed in and the numbers that Carol Ann came with. We went to the auditor. Uh, but then after we were doing more research, we found, you know, with Jeannie Hallers and uh, Kovich, Mike couldn't take his vacation. So we don't want to have to deny payment 
because he couldn't take his vacation. That's the caveat on that, that if he would have been able to take his vacation, we wouldn't be having this meeting. So right. we, I'm suggesting, and we, I talked to Randy, and we've talked to, uh, we've talked to Carol Ann, that we pay the difference of the uh, $4,011.65 to his spouse. Right. So, and, and just so for we, I have to sign off on this so we have it for the auditor, correct? Right. And just for their general knowledge, for the new guys, um, during this time, Big Mike Bakovic was out sick for eight weeks, Longer six, eight weeks. And then Jeannie was, was out, and that's the bulk of the finance department. So Mike Slocum was literally stuck here. And I think they all came back right about when I started. Truth yeah, they did. <laughs> I, that's what I thought. They all yeah. started coming back down. <laughs> so at that point, he really couldn't take his vacation. Yeah, it was Mike and then... Uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. Tracy. Tracy. Tracy was here, and then she was out here and there. So a lot of the times it was just Mike for the department. So. And we probably should just do a resolution just because I know that Caroline's going something in the file in case the auditor asks. Because our, our ordinance, quite candidly, is ridiculous to try to understand. That's what well, the genesis of it all was trying to understand what the ordinance was and apply it. But underlying it all was, regardless of the interpretation, Mike just never had the opportunity to take that time. So. Okay. Mr. Hapley, move forward. Move it forward. Mr. Zerman. Move it forward. Move it forward. I don't think we have to have a special meeting. I would just let Cheryl know that it's coming with me. I talked to Cheryl yesterday. I want to get off the break. I just told her, yeah, we'd have to go through and I'll get a date from Carol Ann when it would be paid. And yeah, next council meeting actually would be not until August, August right? Mid August. August. Okay. So. Okay. Yes. So something that we, even if it's under 12.5, it's something council still has to. Well, because. The way the ordinance is written. Yeah. The auditor may, the auditor, when Carol Ann and I looked at it, Carol had an opinion, Mike had an opinion, I tended to agree with Carol Ann, but the ordinance is so painful, she took the extra step of talking to the auditor about their interpretation, and they tended to agree with Carol Ann <coughs> as well, but they weren't looking at it from this other standpoint of could Mike take the time off. So, in light of the fact she's already had a conversation with the auditor, I'd like to have something in the file that that the city took the position that Mike's entitled to it. Here's a resolution so that we don't get dinged for not having a resolution to support the payout. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, it is under the 12.5. It's yeah. under the 12.5. I, I think that's, that's, that's the reason good. the auditor, so she has in her records the auditor has added one for the audit, the next audit. Okay. I have moved it forward then. Yeah. Okay. 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 We'll move it forward. Okay. Which brings us back to item two. Motion to adjourn the executive session for legal advice from council regarding the record. Somebody so move? Second. Um, I'll so move. Okay. Second. We will move into executive session. No, you guys are good. Just a reminder, in executive session, there's no note-taking, and everything in executive session is private. It's not to yeah. leave the room. Before we start, i got to go back. <laughs> <laughs> the chest case. Just want to note that it's okay to this executive session here. I'm, I'm sorry? clear on why this is legal advice. Um, it's advice of counsel as a matter of case law. It's not, it's not considered deliberations or debate, so it's not subject to the open meeting. I just want to put on the record that I've got to. We will be reconvening them. We will have to reconvene after executive session. I'll close this door and wait outside then. That's fine. Okay, I'll accept the motion to adjourn out of executive session. So moved. Second. Second. This, uh. Hmm. Okay. At this point, um, <coughs> we'll move to recognition of the public 30 minutes per person. 30 minutes is allotted, 3 minutes per person. We gotta, we gotta wait. Is it here? All comments will be directed okay. towards the chair. Yeah. Okay. At this point, we'll uh, go into the public portion of the meeting. Um, 30 minutes is allotted, three minutes per person. All comments must be directed towards the chair. So anybody wishing to speak would uh, raise your hand. Name and address. Angelo Trivisano, 34186 Walker Drive. Did council just do something? Council was in executive session and we adjourned out of executive session. Okay.
Okay. At that, we'll adjourn this meeting at 7.23 p.m. I'm leaving tomorrow morning for our annual train for National Guard. So Thank you for your service. Sir. Thank you for your service. Be safe. Be wise. <laughs>